I have just taken an angle grinder and cut all the way around this geezer and along the seam and I've managed to take this outer casing of galvanized iron off. I took all the bolts out and here is the heating element and now I want to get rid of all this foam So on this side, there seems to be a plastic plug. Well, it took me as long to pick up the blow, blow in foam as it took to take it off. So I don't know what the moral of the story is. Perhaps do it in a room where you can sweep the floor. And as you can see, there's still tons of little pieces left over. Well, we're going to try and turn this into a rocket stove. So let's just first walk out. I need this USB fan to fit in here. What I think I need is for slightly, I need to cut these a little bit. Then 
this USB fan. I will simply bend these over and hold the fan in place, but I don't want to do that for the one. So these are just going to have to be bent over. So the fan is to blow air in to our rocket stove. This is going to be the top of the rocket stove. Here we're going to put our wood in and we're going to turn it into charcoal. You could even cook on top. It's got a sort of a plate here. So there is our hot water geezer. And this was simply a coffee tin. And it's sitting nice and firmly there, fairly airtight. And now we can we have our USB fan here, fill it with firewood, light it, and then we'll have to light it through here, blow air in, and then quickly turn the wood into charcoal if we want to make biochar. See how nicely that fits in there all the way around. You can see it's pretty airtight. Well, I have here my rocket stove set up with these spars to brace it. There is the entrance where we're going to put our fan and we're going to light it through here. So now I'm going to pack this full of wood and then set it on fire. I'll put them in. Now we're going to start putting all the branches in well we are about to light our rocket stove let's put some leaves in there let's spray in some methylated spirits let's light it so there it's burning at the top that's what it looks like immediately that we light it That is what it looks like inside our rocket stove. It looks like it's burning. There's also very little, actually very little smoke being produced. There is some, but very little. So there is our fan. Fire's burning. Here is our brick powering the fan. With a fan on, there's even less smoke. So now it's almost smoke free with that fan on. So we put the rag on top, that stopped the smoke completely, made an airtight seal. There's a little bit of smoke coming out the bottom. We're going to leave it for 15 minutes or so, or maybe even longer. 
and it's gonna carbonize completely. After this was sealed off after about 10 minutes, there's nothing, no pollution at all. That's just steam. You can see it. There's the little wisps of steam. But that just disappears in the air and on top there's absolutely no smoke whatsoever. So we're hoping that whatever branches were unburnt are just turning into charcoal inside here. Yeah, it's not terribly hot. It's been about half an hour to three quarters of an hour. Let's Feels pretty cold in there. No fire going on. Look at that beautiful charcoal. Absolutely beautiful. Biochar. So, absolutely beautiful biochar. Charcoal. Light. Man, I'm impressed with this thing. I guess the thing to do would be to just leave it till tomorrow. Because the moment you let air in, if, if anything is still burning, it's going to catch again. So... I mean, just look how perfect the charcoal that is. So, so it looks like it's made perfect charcoal. And um, what I don't want to do is have it catch fire again. So I'm just going to leave it closed. But there, as you can see, is our charcoal. Wonderful. So I'm just going to close that back up. Make sure that no air gets into it. I'm just, it's already cold, but I'm just going to leave it. Till tomorrow. And then I'm just going to empty all the charcoal out. Now what I plan to do is, this is a municipal, they gave it to us, it's a refuse, it's a compost maker. Um, and you throw all your wet waste in here. And I throw even meat, and you can see it's, it's, it, it really breaks down very quickly. Now I plan to mix the biochar in here, the charcoal in here. Then the charcoal absorbs all the goodness from this um, composty stuff. You leave it, the biochar in here for, they say, at least three to six months. But I won't, I'll just leave it for a while. Charcoal, as you know, absorbs things, it'll absorb all the nutrients in this compost. So you mix it up with the compost. And inside the charcoal, it grows a whole biome, a whole biosphere, a little, I don't know what you would call it, ecological zone of microbes. It absorbs all the vitamins, not the vitamins, the minerals. C. Hopkins, caffeine, mighty good. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, etc. And then the charcoal 
you put it on your garden and it slowly releases all the goodness that was in this um, compost and it also seeds the fungi and bacteria from the charcoal and biochar charcoal can last a thousand years apparently it's unbelievable in the ground because it just doesn't decay apparently uh, it's hard to believe that's what they say so I'm going to add the charcoal that I've made into here mix it all around and leave it for a couple of uh, for a month or two keep on adding wet, more wet waste and then add it to the garden the last time I dug the compost out of here it made the most absolutely wonderful compost there were so many earthworms inside here I think a thing that people don't realize is if you do throw your even your meaty products like chicken bones and old chicken and dog pellets or any any proteiny stuff in here it just so speeds up the breakdown of your compost sure you may get a few maggots but so what those are the things that help break it down it, instead of being a three to six month process it just takes a few weeks in fact for your wet waste to break down so that's what I'm planning to do with a biochar